my brother and I decided to hardwire our entire home with ethernet cables, and I'm going to show you how we did that. So in older homes, if you're unaware, they don't come with ethernet cables installed in the house. So if you wanna have a hardwired connection, you're gonna have to either route it from your router yourself, or you're gonna have to do something using wireless connection points across the house using something like an access point, which again requires a ethernet cable or something like this Google Wi-Fi right here. But even this is not a true wired connection because it plugs into the wall outlet and uses a Wi-Fi signal. So if you want really good internet, and we all know the strongest internet is a hardwire directly from your router, you're gonna have to use ethernet cables. And the only way you can do that is by running ethernet cables all throughout the house. So one challenge with this was that our router is all the way in our basement. And if we wanna get cables up to the third floor, basement, middle floor, third floor, we have to make holes through the walls and route cables like that into the attic and then down into the walls. And that's difficult because we don't know how long we need the cables to be. So instead of buying already made cables at a certain length, we decided to make our own cables using a bulk cable box. So you can buy like a big ba uh, box of Cat6 wiring, Cat5, whatever you want. Uh, and it just comes in this big roll and you just pull it out and you can see it's just raw cable, there's no end point connected to it. Uh, you gotta splice your own cable, which we have done uh, in order to make a super long cable that runs from the attic all the way down into the basement. Uh, and we had to do that a couple of times. So I'll show you the process for that. To make your own cabling, you'll need a few things. Cable boots, these are kind of optional, but they're useful. RJ45 pass-through connectors, RJ45 pass-through wire crimpers, wire stripper slash cutter thing, and some scissors. The pass-through variations of all these tools are optional, but the pass-through versions make this way easier and I definitely recommend them. The first step is to put on the cable boot over top the wire if you choose to use them. And the next step is to get the wire stripper and place the raw cable into the teeth. Then spin it around like three times and this will cut the rubber exterior and allow you to pull it off. This is going to expose the internal twisted cables. Next, we're gonna bend the twisted pairs downwards, then grab the scissors and cut that plastic divider in the middle, and also cut off the small rope. We want to allow for as much free space to work with as possible. Now grab that piece of rubber that was just cut off and use it to untwist the cables by pushing down to separate them. Here comes the fun part. <laughs> just kidding, that was sarcasm. This is actually the worst part. We have to straighten out the wires and get them in the correct order. We can follow this diagram as shown on screen and then start to tug, bend, and shake the wires repeatedly until they start straightening out. Wow, sounds like a Catholic conversion therapy camp, <laughs> am I right? <clears throat> so this part can be kind of difficult because underneath they're still twisted up and they kind of naturally want to bend back into that order. So this part's gonna be tedious and really annoying and can take a while but it's important to remember that both ends of the cable have the same order as shown on the diagram. Once we have the wires in the correct order, it's time to push them through the pass-through connector. The reason this pass-through connector is so useful is because we can pass the wires through the connection, which allows us to see if the wires are in the correct order before crimping it and making that part of the cable unusable. So take the wires, Flatten them out as much as possible. If they're being difficult, try cutting them a little so that they're even in length, and that's gonna help push them through the connector. This process can also be a little difficult and annoying, so be patient. Finally, push the wires through the connector, ensure they're in the correct order, then push the connector all the way down so that it hits the base of the cable and fits snug. Also, as a quick note, when pushing the cables through, Make sure the cables are being pushed while the connector is upside down so that the orange is on the left and brown is on the right and the clip is on the back side as shown by this image. You can see right here in the middle, the striped blue wire wasn't pushing through all the way. So I had to pull the wires back out, straighten them out more, and then try again. This is what makes the pass-through connectors so useful. Also, just another quick note in post, make sure when you're doing the second step when using the wire stripper to cut the exterior of the cable to give yourself enough wire to work with. If your cut is too short, 
it'll make this part right here very difficult. Hey, that looks pretty good to me. Push the connector all the way back so that it fits snug on the cable and you are good to go. Now we get the pass through crimping tool and insert the cable into the RJ45 slot. Push it in and press down on the handles. This is going to cut off all the excess wires that are poking out of the connector. All right, the cable is done. Now just push the cable boot into place if you used one and repeat this process on the opposite end of the cable. Once both ends are finished, we can test the cable to ensure it's working properly. To test the cable, we can use a device called a cable tester. It's super simple to use. Just plug both ends of the cable into the device and push the button. If it's green, then the cable is good. If it's red, then something is wrong. Um, but before we even crimped the cables, me and my brother brainstormed where we we're gonna put our access points. One is gonna be right here for the top floor. Here's the access point on the second floor and the last one is in the basement. And then we also wanted to decide where to put the ethernet jacks for the rooms that we we're gonna put drops in. So one, we're gonna put in the master bedroom, which we have done right here. And then we decided to do two more drops on this floor. One is in my current bedroom, which is going to be behind my little shelf right here. You can see that. So in the future, if anyone wants to connect a switch in here or put plug your laptop in, you know, it's very convenient. And then the last drop on the top floor is right back here which is already plugged in. I'm using it right now. This connection goes into this uh, little TV console and I have an actual little switch in there, uh, which runs to my computer, my TV, uh, a couple other things. So I'm using that right now. So I'm fully hardwired while also using the Google Wi-Fi for wireless connection. So we plan those things out. And then we also had to figure out like where we're gonna channel the cables from the attic to the basement. So yeah, the first step was making these drywall holes all throughout the uh, stairwells to prepare and make sure there is a path for the cables to go through. We we'll basically cut holes in the drywalls from this stairwell, like here, and then check for studs. If there's a stud, we make a little hole in the stud. Like if there's anything, we will drill a little hole and then we'll run the cables down there and then down we'll go. And the cables you can see are right here and they're gonna go down here. There's a little board. So you drilled a hole big enough for all these cables to fit through. And we'll go further down into the next stairwell. And you can see it's just about finding spots in the drywall, like, you know, no little studs. So you can go down there. But then you gotta drill here, it goes down here, and this is actually where it goes in to the basement. And the next step was drilling the holes in the attic and fishing the ethernet cables through our holes, which was very tedious and annoying. So whenever you're working in the attic, you always have to be aware that there's insulation, which is typically fiberglass insulation. So you're always gonna wanna wear your PPE, KN95 respirator mask. And also in the attic, uh, our attic is pretty small and close to our heads. So you're gonna want some sort of a bumper cap if you're gonna go in like a tight space. Uh, so you don't have nails poking at your head. Um, it's like a little hard hat that we decided to wear. There's also like a little vest that we put on just to protect our backs when we're up there in this like very small crawl space because we don't want the nails to impale our backs or scratch us. You know, just general safety stuff. Wearing gloves to make sure you don't get, you know, fiberglass and stuff in your skin. Wearing safety glasses so your eyes are protected. Wearing your PPE, personal protective equipment. And then we went into the attic and I'll show you that. Right here. Just open up this latch that we have. Nice convenient ladder right here. Pull it down. Right, just like that. Oops. And just go up. And it's hot in here. Turn the light on. Okay. So now we're in the attic. You can see that ethernet cable is drilled in to this access point. Basically what we did was we figured out where we're gonna drill the holes 
for the cables uh, and you can see like there's nails and stuff in the roofs and we had to go kind of far over there into the fiberglass so yeah we wore the ppe drilled the holes that aligned on like the bedroom walls and then we had to get the cable up here we had to fish the cable from the bottom and bring it up to the top so we had the source box right here and we had to bring it up here route it down into the stairwell and then down all the way into the basement and the reason we had to do that was so we could have slack we could keep pulling on the box to get the cable as long as we needed it <clears throat> and once we got it to our desired length with enough slack we would cut it there and leave the cable and we would crimp the cable at that end so the cable was still raw and we created the cable at this end tested the cable make sure it works so we did that on this room and that room the master bedroom and then here for this access point that process took a while it was very annoying having to fish the cables what we ended up doing was i don't know if you can see back there that black wire we found this black wire uh just dangling in our wall i think it was an old uh, satellite cable dish cable or something uh it wasn't connected to anything so what we did was we cut it and we used it as like a because we didn't have any string and normally you can tie a string to your cable to fish it but we didn't have any so we just taped the end of that cable to one of these blue cables and we just kind of fished it up and it worked so that was our process to bring the cables up to the attic and we just routed them in so again in case it was a little confusing about how i explained it live in the video we have the raw cable at the source box and we fish it up into the attic like from the bedroom into the attic and then we take it from the attic and we put it into the drywall of the stairwell so it goes into the channels we kind of made in the stairwell and it goes all the way into the basement storage room and then gets plugged in to the switch. Uh, but at this time, the cable is raw, so there's no connections on the ends. We have to make those connections once we have the length figured out and we cut the cable and then we'll make the connections like that. So that's where it goes down into the basement. And here we are in the basement. Uh, this is where our uh, ISP's ethernet comes in from. So we have it connected to the Google Wi-Fi right now, uh, just to give the house Wi-Fi. But if we go down into my brother's current setup bedroom, we have a bunch of switches he's configured. This is where all of our ethernet uh, cables have been plugged into. This one goes into uh, my office. This one goes into the access point on the third floor. And then here in the storage room are the last two cables. This one's for the master bedroom. And this one is for my bedroom. So these cables are all run through. You can see behind here, tucked away, down into the crawl space. Can't really see it on camera, but that hole where the light is coming from is that small hole in the stairwell. So that is how the cables get routed from the attic into the basement, into this main switch uh, where we now get a hard wire connection from our ISP's ethernet uh, with the cable run from over there. So obviously the setup isn't finished. We just did the main wiring. My brother's gonna clean stuff up and do all that. And then after everything was in place, I created all the ethernet connections. I crimped the cables myself. And we just bought wall plates with the RJ45 connectors and just cut out a small hole in the drywall, put them in. And uh, yeah, that's basically how we did it. It's very simple, just a little time consuming, a little tedious, a little annoying, but very simple, very doable. Especially if you live in a smaller house like this small townhouse. If you live in a bigger house, that's going to be a much harder project. But this house is pretty straightforward with the layout and all that. But uh, it was a fun project and it's definitely worth it. Uh, I can show you the difference in internet speeds. Here's the before clip, which I'm running on my current desktop, uh, just on the previous uh, Google Wi-Fi using an ethernet cable from the Google Wi-Fi. So it's like a wired connection, but it's still wireless. And then the after clip, I'm using my laptop uh, with the new hardwired connection that's run from the switch all the way in the basement. So basically a direct line up here and it's way faster so as you can see by the internet speeds it's very well worth the time and investment we put into this project 
It was also just fun to do and good practice for networking, physical topography, layout stuff, making your own cables, making your own network. It's pretty cool stuff. Running your own wires, never done that before. So fun experience overall. It also adds value to the house now that we have ethernet connections in all these rooms. You know, we didn't have that before, now we do. So that's pretty cool. I hope you learned something from watching this video. If you did learn something, let me know what you learned. And uh, if you thought it was interesting, whatever, leave a comment, I don't know. Make sure you subscribe, follow me on social media, it's all linked in the description, follow me on Twitch, you know the drill. Join the Discord server, I'll see you later.